Hi, my name is Soichi Noguchi from Japan. I am Mission Specialist 1 on Crew 1 mission to International Space Station. Well, my mission will be uh, uh, help support uh, commander and the pilot on uh, spacecraft uh, uh, Crew Dragon. And of course, once I arrive on the space station, I'll be a border engineer and do lots of science and maintenance and uh, spacewalks, robotics, all kinds of work. Yeah, it's uh, quite a difference. Uh, Demo 2 is obviously it's a successful flight, but this is a test flight. This is our first end-to-end uh, -end test from launch, docking, to coming back. And of, of course, we are waiting for the safe return. But the, once after the return of the Demo 2, NASA will take a look at all the data along with the SpaceX. And then the NASA declares this is good vehicle to fly, maybe certification for the space flight. And after that, our mission comes. So the Crew-1 is the first operational space flight after the certification given by NASA. Well, it's a good question. Obviously, this, uh, the NASA will uh, check all the safety and all the system requirement, and uh, NASA assures that this vehicle, the Crew Dragon made by SpaceX, is fit for the space flight. And that basically opened the door for any kind of space flight, including just a tourist flight or the commercial uh, aimed flight, not just for the professional flight like us. So this, this is a big step on the commercial space flight. Well, I'm really fortunate enough to have a good crew member. Uh, Hopper is our commander. He's a really uh, natural leader. He's really thoughtful and caring and really fortunate to have a great commander like him. Ike, I would say he's the best rookie ever. I don't know any other rookie astronaut who is really capable and knowledgeable and, and fun guy as well. Shannon Walker, uh, we spent a long, long time together. Uh, uh, we're in the same age, and uh, her, I really respect her on her knowledge. Uh, she's really an ISS guru. And for me, it's more like a running mate, because uh, we are uh, space specialists, uh, mission specialists. I'm a mission specialist one, and she's mission specialist two. And together, we can share the knowledge and kind of back up each other to accomplish a big uh, mission goal. So uh, we are very happy to, to interact with each other. So four of us, the great team, and obviously we have a lot of a different background, and the diversity definitely gives us a great rigidity to our crew. Right now, our training is uh, basically two parts. One is a uh, lot of training as an ISS uh, long expedition crew member, which involves uh, science uh, payloads and also the maintenance task and also some of the uh, assembly tasks uh, remain on the space station. The other half is, of course, the SpaceX. Uh, we are learning to fly the new vehicle. Crew Dragon vehicle, obviously, uh, the pretty successful launch on the Demo 2, and it shows it's definitely uh, nicely designed and it's very efficient way of uh, doing business to the to going to the space station, and uh, we really love it. Yeah, I was fortunate enough to fly uh, uh, two different uh, vehicles so far, a space shuttle and uh, Russian Soyuz. And this new SpaceX is obviously uh, launched like a uh, capsule. This is more like a Soyuz. And the docking sequences is quite resembling to the space shuttle. And uh, landing is totally new. It's uh, we're gonna be uh, splashing down into the ocean just like Apollo. So uh, it's a little bit of a different flavor. It's a combination of all the uh, 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 space vehicle which mankind developed so far. So it's very exciting. Uh, the shuttle training here in Houston and the Soyuz training in Star City, Russia, uh, obviously it's a 
totally different approach. Uh, I personally like the way that NASA trained me for, on the first flight, but uh, the Russian side, they, they train me from the, from the scratch, to start from the theoretical part to kind of build up to the operational skills. While Space Shuttle, you learn through the simulation and learn from the, the, the other crew member. So it's a totally different approach, and uh, SpaceX has its own way. Uh, and but each uh, different method eventually uh, make us a good astronaut who can operate the system safely. Because ultimate goal is to return the vehicle with the same number of uh, people go up and they come back safely. So it's all the same. Well, for the, uh, uh, as a long duration crew member, you have to know not just the U.S. module, but all those each international partners modules, Russian module, Japanese module, uh, European module, and of course the Canadian arm. So a lot of uh, uh, maintenance and also uh, safety related uh, events are, uh, we have to know. And especially for the emergence type of scenario, you know, the depressurization, fire, and toxic atmosphere, those kind of things you have to memorize and you have to act as a one team to counteract with the situation. And those type of uh, emergency response training we take a lot of time. And that's a good uh, team building uh, uh, opportunity as well. Well, I think having uh, two different experiences so far definitely helps understanding the new system. And the uh, Space Shuttle and Soyuz, obviously, it's a two totally different uh, system, totally different design, the uh, spacecraft. And I kind of feel the similar approach on for like a launch and launch escape is uh, somewhat similar to what the Soyuz guys doing. And the uh, rendezvous approach and the, the way they dock is uh, I feel the same philosophy as the space shuttle. And, but the important thing is uh, this is brand new design from scratch, uh, 21st century spacecraft. So I have a knowledge of space shuttle and the Soyuz, but I don't want to stick to those old experience. We are learning a new system and this is a new design. And obviously the SpaceX did a very nice job designing the new spacecraft. I think uh, this uh, uh, SpaceX training, uh, obviously this is new, uh, so uh, I would say it's more like a half development uh, support and half training. So unlike uh, Space Shuttle program or Soyuz, which have a long history of a safe uh, flight, and, and I kind of learned from, uh, from the previous uh, crew member, but this one you have to uh, kind of build the training template by, by ourselves. And half of the, the time I spend in Houston, California, it's more like helping them develop the, the procedure. So it's a kind of new experience, but eventually uh, this SpaceX Crew Dragon become a standard and uh, we, will, we will learn from, from their system, from their operating side. So, so I think eventually this will become a new standard. Well, I wanted to be an astronaut for, for a long time. Uh, uh, high school days, uh, I s watched the shuttle launch, the STS-1, and I thought that this is the time that a uh, uh, lot of people starting to fly to space and uh, just continue to, to pursue that career. I studied uh, uh, aerodynamics and uh, uh, aerospace engineering, and, and I started working as an engineer uh, that makes all the, the space component and also the aerodynamics uh, research. And uh, when I turned 30, uh, Japanese Space Agency started recruiting another astronaut class. And uh, I was fortunate enough to be selected as one out of 572 applicants and sent immediately to Johnson Space Center and I joined the class of 1996. And that class obviously have a, a lot of people, 44 classmates and a lot of interesting stories, but uh, I am in Houston since then. 
Well, I think the, the biggest uh, uh, thing is to, to, to be an astronaut is the motivation. You know, you have to be motivated, highly motivated, to become an astronaut. And uh, you study physics, you study math, but uh, you have to keep your aspiration to fly to space, and that's the that main thing. Yes, uh, uh, I have uh, my lovely wife and uh, three daughters, and they are now in Japan. Of course, in this uh, situation, uh, COVID-19, uh, they are not freely come to, to here, and I don't have much chance to go back to Japan, so that's kind of a separation. Uh, so that's one uh, uh, tough situation for me, but uh, we'll, be, we'll, be, uh, we'll be together, although we are physically separated. Yes, uh, uh, my kids are fortunate enough to attend my two previous launches. Uh, the first time on the space shuttle, they are uh, uh, elementary school, and uh, they they just enjoy uh, traveling to Florida, uh, aside from the, the rocket launch. And on my Soyuz launch, they are almost the teenagers, and they can understand all those uh, anxiety and uh, uh, the, the, the feeling of the, the rush and the feeling of excitement. So, so it's second time is more memorable. Hopefully this time they're now grown up, but they're still uh, very happy to come to see the dad launch. So uh, it should be a nice uh, family reunion. Yeah, it's uh, actually uh, those uh, three flights are so far apart. The 2005, uh, our main way of communication was uh, it's a fax, actually. And then we just started to have some very limited email. On the second flight, however, uh, we have internet on board. We can do the tweet. We can do the video conferencing. And uh, now we have almost 24-7 uh, uh, email access plus uh, uh, video uh, conferencing capability on their cell phone as well. So it's much uh, closer uh, in this uh, digital age. So it uh, should, be, should be a fun, uh, fun stay. Yeah, I think that's one uh, good thing about uh, the digital evolution. Uh, so uh, obviously, uh, as the technology evolves, uh, uh, it's much easier to communicate and it's uh, convenient for them as well. Uh, before, uh, I remember that on my first flight, uh, my family has to come to the space center to, to hear all those conversations. And the uh, well, second time, it's because it's Russia, there's somewhat limited. Now, everything, you can stream it on, on their cell phone. And uh, emails are uh, pretty much uh, uh, stress-free. So uh, definitely the IT advances uh, is doing a big favor for us for the family communication between space and ours. Well, uh, from the, the changes from the space shuttle to SpaceX is big. I, I told my daughters that the changes is almost feel like the, the very old telephone booth to the smartphone. So uh, back in the days, uh, you know, we have to dial the phone and that's what they only do. And now we have all those capability in a very slick design and that's what like uh, SpaceX feel like. So uh, in the space shuttle, there's a, almost 3,000 switches on the cockpit and each switch do one thing, like opening the valves, turn on the lights. And the SpaceX is uh, it's only have three screens, touch screens, and you can do everything over there. So it's definitely a modern style, and uh, it's a really efficient way of interacting with, with the system. So the, if you think about upgrading your old uh, dial phone to the smartphone, you kind of feel the excitement of uh, upgrading from Space Shuttle to SpaceX. Well, uh, I would say uh, challenging new task, challenging new missions, this really stir me up. 
and uh, I was really fortunate enough to try the third mission. First one is Space Shuttle, second one is Soyuz, this time it's SpaceX. So uh, it's really, I feel really fortunate that I have gotten given a chance to try third time to space travel. Yes, sir, I did uh, three spacewalks back in uh, 2005. Oh, yeah, by all means, I'd be happy to open the hatch and go outside and, uh, and have fun for six hours and don't want to come back, actually. <laughs> wow, well, spacewalk is, is fun, period. Uh, a lot of people ask me uh, for the spacewalk, uh, is it dangerous, is there any risk, and, uh, and uh, yes, of course there's a risk involved, it's a high risk environment and adrenaline rush type of activities, but uh, we definitely enjoy it, everything flows, but it's really slow, and uh, the view is just magnificent, there's nothing between you and Earth, and just the open space and uh, we can definitely enjoy the view and also all the tasks we train for many many times on the ground usually under the pool so you by the time you do the spacewalk you know all the tasks by heart so it's actually very enjoyable and it's very fun and i'm really looking forward to go back and do the spacewalk I would say for the space uh, travel or the astronaut, cosmonaut in, in general, uh, Alexei Leonov is my hero and I was really, really fortunate to have a lot of interaction with him uh, because of the uh, Association of Space Explorers. That's a kind of a, a reunion of all the cosmonauts and astronauts around the world. And uh, me being uh, one of the youngest member uh, from, from JAXA, and obviously the Alexei is uh, the most uh, uh, prominent member, but we have a lot of interaction talking about those international friendship, international organization, and spacewalk. He did the spacewalk before I was born, but uh, he gives me a lot of uh, advice, and also he was eager enough to listen to my story of the latest uh, space station days. So, so we have a lot of uh, uh, time in together, and I really appreciate that. This mission is all about international cooperation. My role in this flight is to accomplish safe return of the Crew Dragon. Throughout my time on board space station, I will dedicate my time to the advancement of the science. Together we will overcome all the obstacles. All for one, crew one for all. Well, the, the important thing for us is, of course, to keep the dream alive. And for this uh, commercial space program uh, is Obviously, Launch America. This commercial program is by the Americans, for the Americans, of the Americans. So uh, Americans are really should be proud of this achievement. But for the rest of the uh, 7.4 billion people, I will open the door for you. The spacecraft of this century is not just for America, but this is international cooperation, and all the other people around the world have a chance to ride on this Crew Dragon. So. This is a new era. I totally agree. Uh, this launch America is a great achievement for the American company, and of course NASA played a big role, but the, this achievement benefits the whole world because International Space Station itself is an international program, and uh, there are a lot of companies are looking forward to be the second or third SpaceX, meaning any country around the world now have a chance at least to tr give it a try. They can have their own vehicle certified by NASA and then bring people to space station or, the, uh, or beyond. So uh, this definitely a new era, open up the new capability and possibility. Obviously the launch day is the different from the, the, the day before that you wake up and uh, you try to feel like normal, but obviously you you know you're going to space that day, and uh, all the sequence from uh, medical checkup, suit up, walk out to the pad, 
and arriving at the pad and getting to the, the into the capsule. It's everything is is different. We although we do lots of uh, dress rehearsal type of training, the launch day is different, and um, I'm really looking forward to go back to that launch day. I think uh, my memory on the launch day on the on the space shuttle, especially the first space shuttle, is really vivid. You know, we go, we we visit the, uh, the launch pad many many times and see a lot of people, a lot, lot of technicians working around the vehicle. But on the launch day, it's only you and the support closeout crew, and all the rest of the people is outside those uh, three mile perimeter. So there's nobody around the launch pad. And the vehicle is definitely like, like living creature. All the all the pipes, all the pipelines are, are alive, and there's a fueling going on. So I really remember the morning of the, the launch day. Arrive at the pad. Hey, this vehicle is alive and waiting to go up. So I kind of expect the same kind of ex excitement on the launch day to the 39A with the Crew Dragon. Well, uh, many people say, uh, especially the, the returning crew, uh, they feel like uh, they never missed a date on space station, meaning they, on the day one of the returning flight, they feel like they were on the station yesterday as well, meaning you quickly go back to the old habits uh, of, of uh, going back to the zero gravity life and uh, start from there. So. Uh, I, uh, my second flight, uh, first flight was on the shuttle, and then the second flight was Soyuz, so it's totally different uh, launch experience. But by the time I opened the door, opened the hatch of the space station, I feel like I was living here for, for long, long times. Uh, my first flight was 2005. That was on the space shuttle, Discovery, STS-114. And that was two weeks flight. And uh, we have uh, five year training for the next flight. And my flight was 2009, end of 2009. That was on the Russian Soyuz and uh, was launched from Baikonur. So it's uh, roughly uh, five years between those flights. Uh, my Soyuz flight uh, lasts about uh, five and a half months. I launched. Uh, uh, the day before Christmas, and I come back a few days before the, uh, well, a few days after June, so yeah, roughly six months. Yeah, during my stay, uh, we have a space shuttle, STS 130 came up and then installed uh, the cupola. That was uh, quite a game changer. Uh, before that, we have a smaller window, and uh, everybody's kind of cramming and fight for the view. And now we have a big, big window and sub windows, and uh, uh, a lot of astronauts just glue to the window and take photos and videos and do the video conference with the family. So that was quickly uh, changed our quality of space station life. One of the fun moment is uh, the, on my first flight, I flew with Steve Robinson. He was uh, EVA together, so it's a good friend on the space shuttle. And he comes to the space station with the cupola. So uh, we open the window, and then he pick up the guitar, and he played the song for us. So that's, that's a great moment that we have enjoyed the time together. <laughs> 